Welcome to Sunday Recap. You are here with myself, Nana, and we are here with Reverend Amy. Hey, Nana, how's it going? Good. Welcome to Sunday Recap. Thank you. We are on week two of Encounters with the Risen Jesus. So, um, <laughs> you know, as per usual, yep. challenge. You're always with challenge. Yes. In three minutes, could you give us a summary of what you preached? on Sunday for sure so in week two of Encouragement in Jesus we were looking at the story of the road to Emmaus Cleopas and his companion walking away from Jerusalem walking away from the other disciples walking away from their pain and their heart and their sorrow their disappointment in what has happened literally I guess like packing it in and, and going home like they don't know what else to do it's the first Easter day you know, some of the women say they went to the tomb and Jesus is risen, but they've not seen any evidence, so yeah. they're hitting the road. And basically, as they walk, uh, they're joined by the third person. Luke tells us straight away it's Jesus, but they don't recognise him. This guy walks with them, asks them why they're sad. Cleopas is like, you must be the only person that don't know what's yeah. happened. Jesus is like, what things have happened? Mm -hmm. Joker Jesus. Um, Cleopas tells them, like, mm -hmm. we're, we're devastated. We put our hope in this guy and he's dead. And as they walk, Jesus explains all of the, what we call the Old Testament to them, of how everything points towards the Messiah, towards the suffering Christ, and basically showing them like the basis of what they actually believe in, that is what has come to pass. Yeah. Anyway, the whole journey, seven miles later, they get to Emmaus, they uh, invite the stranger into their home to eat because it's dark, as they eat around the table, as Jesus breaks be bread, they realise it's Jesus, Jesus vanishes. Yeah. And they are then like, mate, like, how did we not know it was Jesus? Like, was your heart burning? My heart was burning. How did we not realise it was him the whole yeah. time? Anyway, they put their shoes on, put their jackets on, they run the whole way back to Jerusalem to share the message with the other disciples. They don't know Jesus has already appeared to them. Yeah. They just know that they've seen Jesus and that's news that has to be shared. Yeah. And I guess it's an overview of the text, but then we start to unpack, you know, Where's Jesus when we're frustrated, when we're disappointed? Actually, he's right there with us on the road. The problem so often is, do we recognise that he's there? Mm. We thought a little bit about how Jesus asked Cleopas and the companion to explain how they're feeling, rather than just jumping ahead with a surprise or telling them the answers. Instead, he cares for their heart. He cares for their frustration. So about that, we, we spoke a little bit about what it means to recognise what Jesus is doing, what he's saying. And do we expect the living, breathing God to still join us on the road today, to still be present in our homes, to still have something to say, to warm our hearts? And we kind of finished by saying, look, these Cleopas and the companion, like they'd walked all day, yet when they encounter Jesus, it changes everything and they have to rush to share the news. And actually, what does that mean for us today to encounter the living Lord Jesus, to know his transformation? And then that must also then compel us to want to share it with others too. So yeah, that's the summary of the sermon. Awesome. Okay. Shortest ever, maybe I don't know. Maybe uh, do you know minutes. what? I think that was the most concise that you've you've been. So you're getting there. <laughs> Gold star or an egg, <laughs> a cream egg, <laughs> a cream egg, <laughs> not a boiled one. <laughs> no, thank you. Let's no. let's delve into it. Mm. Um, you know where is is God in our frustrations and and our sufferings? Obviously, we see um, clear path. Mm -hmm. um, and his friend, you know, they seem pretty like, oh gosh, you know, they're, they're on their way to Emmanuel. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and Jesus shows up. Right. Um, Jesus actually shows up. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, talk us through a little bit about, you know, where God, where God can be um, in our suffering or frustrations or disappointments. Yeah, yeah. You know. I think it's so interesting, right? They're literally like, walking away they're disappointed they're frustrated like with every step they're talking about their sadness and into that conversation you're right jesus appears and, and just joins them on the road and mm -hmm. with every step cleopas and his companion are you know telling jesus about their sorrow about this guy and at no point do they recognize it's jesus mm -hmm. and i was kind of saying in the sermon on sunday like if you're anything like me like when things get difficult like i want to retreat from others I want to look, I look inward and, and start to battle with all sorts of questions. I want to trust the wrong person, like all of those kind of things. But we also tend to start looking down at our feet, right? Because that's just something natural. Well, I guess for me and for other people too, yeah. when we're going through difficulties, we look down at our feet. We look inwards for answers. And actually the call of the Christian faith is to look up and out. Yeah. So that when we look up from the one to whom our help comes from, when we also look out to others, there's something about how we encourage each other to see where God is present, how do we pray for one another, mm -hmm. but also how do we even look to the side and recognise that Jesus was there. I think part yeah. of the problem is that Cleopas and his companion are so busy looking at their feet or looking forwards, 
they just failed to meet Jesus' eyes. Like, I do wonder if they'd looked up, if they would have recognised him, mm. reading a little bit into the text. But I do think it's interesting. And, and, you know, the promise of Scripture, and we see it throughout the Gospels, is that Jesus is always there in the storm. Yeah. Right? The disciples are crossing right. over the, um, Lake Galilee, and there's a storm, and where's Jesus? Well, he's walking on the water towards them, mm. because he's always present in the midst. You know, so often um, Christianity is sold as, like, come to Jesus, easy life. Yeah. It's nowhere in, nowhere in scripture because mm. the message was never come to Jesus, the problems go away. The, pro the, the message is come to Jesus and then know that he's always with you in the eye of the storm and the battle and the challenges that we face. And, you know, I shared a little bit in our sermon about that, you know, the really famous footprints poem about, you know, yeah. it's there that God carries us. You know, yeah. The guy sees one set of footprints in the sand where he'd seen two and he realises there's only one set when it's most challenging. He's like, I knew you left me, God. And God's beautiful word to him of, was then that I carried yeah. you. Yeah. You wouldn't have made it through that if I hadn't taken you in my arms, my mm. precious child. Mm. Um, you know, and I said on Sunday that it's not easy to just be like, oh yeah, God's always with me in the challenge. Like this yeah. takes faith. This takes us to remember who God is mm. to then help us navigate the challenge we're in. And you know, hindsight's a beautiful thing when you look back and see how God got you through it and only but God did you navigate that challenge. Mm. But it, what does it mean in our present to trust that God is somehow still working his purposes out? That right. even though it might not be in our timing, even though it might be not what we want, even though we're entirely confused, mm. what does it mean to still trust that somehow God is in control and yeah. he will work this for my good right. and his glory? But that doesn't mean he has to do it the way that I want him to. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do we expect God to, to speak in those moments? Mm. I mean... Cleopas and, and his friend, I'm sure they didn't expect Jesus to one show up and then for him to even you know further explain like right. this is what it's all been for kind mm -hmm. of thing and, and sometimes even in our frustrations sometimes we get answers and sometimes we don't but right. is that expectation there? Yeah mm -hmm. and I love that because I was going to say right at the end of the sermon like I believe fundamentally that the Jesus who walks with Cleopas and probably his wife on the road to Emmaus um, is still the God who walks with us on Ruskell roads, on Tarley mm -hmm. roads, on whatever road that we walk down, but do we expect him to still offer words of guidance, words of hope? And actually, what does it mean to, to spend time actually pursuing those words? Like, mm -hmm. so often we want an instant answer, isn't it? And when we yeah. don't hear it instantly from God, we're like, oh, maybe God doesn't care, or he's not something to say. Yeah. So I love the detail in this story of like, when Jesus first bumps into the road, like, he could just be like, guys, it's me, hey! Yeah. <laughs> it's not what happens. Yeah. You know, he, he walks them through their sadness. Well, first of all, he actually cares enough to listen to what they have to say. You know, mm -hmm. one of the stories where we see this element of Jesus as well, you know, when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, yeah. like Jesus could have just walked into that scene, seen the devastation everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mary and Martha both say to him, if you'd been here, this would never have happened. Jesus was the healer. He could have literally in that moment. Yeah. But no, what does he do instead? He listens to their frustration. He mm -hmm. listens to their sadness. He himself weeps before he does the miracle mm -hmm. and i think we've got a similar thing going on in this story he wants to hear first of their sadness their frustration their weariness before he then reveals who he is mm -hmm. and i think god still does the same thing today he wants us to tell him our burdens our sadness our sorrows indeed our frustration with him because when we give over to him how we are it frees our hands to then receive what it is he wants to give us instead right. and i think there's something really important going on in those um exchanges if you know what i mean yeah because the interesting thing is like jesus doesn't reveal himself straight away he doesn't even reveal himself when he enters their home yeah. he doesn't reveal himself over the table he waits to that final yeah. moment because god's timing is always better yeah. and he's not in a rush to get to the point mm -hmm. the problem is that we're in a rush yeah and when we don't hear instantly we give up and that's yeah. a problem yeah i think it also just speaks um something about you know um you know jesus wants a relationship with right. us and it's, um, you know, and not a, a, a religious one, like he, like you mentioned, you mm. know, he cares about our thoughts and, mm. um, you know, what we're going through, um, and he's willing to listen. Um, yeah. And I think just even in that moment of breaking bread, um, yeah. and that's when they finally realise, oh my gosh, and then he disappears. Um, it, it, it's 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 just um, it's yes yeah, it's, it's a um, great scene to kind of um, read over. Yep. But yeah, I think it definitely also speaks <clears throat> um, about God wanting a, a relationship with us in the good mm -hmm. and the bad when we don't understand when we do understand and mm -hmm. um, 
you know, it also reminds me of, you know, when when he did um, ascend mm -hmm. and people just went back to their day jobs uh, and he was, you know, but he'd already told them like, wait, wait. Yeah. And, you know, um, Cleopas and his companion were d decided, oh, forget Jerusalem, like we're going off to, you know, Emet. <laughs> so it's that kind of thing. Um, but we can all understand, you know, why they would feel that way, yeah, yeah. Um, like waiting. Yeah, um, After Jesus appears at their table, yeah. they run off to tell the other disciples, we've seen him, we've seen him. Mm. And so even the accounts of, you know, the women at the tomb yeah. and things like that, you know, they also enter into that kind of, that experience as well. Um, so yeah, just talk to us about, you know, how some of our experiences can, can and maybe should lead us to yeah. also sharing our experiences. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, encountering Jesus. Absolutely, because mm. I think I said on Sunday morning, like we are here because this news changes our lives. Right. Like there are better things to do on a Sunday morning. If this is not true, mm. like just have a lie in, like go shopping. But if you're here because Jesus has changed your life, that also means that the same Jesus who transformed our life wants mm. to transform our whole community, yeah. our families, our colleagues, our our friends, our neighbours, our streets. Um, the good news of Jesus changes things and it and the commandment from Jesus to his followers is still mm -hmm. to go and share because the message that the Cleopas and probably his wife recognized in this moment was the disappointment had become delight sorrow mm -hmm. had become joy confusion had become purpose yeah. death had become life and if that's not worth sharing I don't know like what is you know that's we, the good news like we watch yeah. a new tv program and we like it and what do we do we recommend it to people right. i keep listening to new podcasts at the moment what do i do i send them to nana like have you seen this episode have you listened to this episode nana find an hour like da -da -da -da. because when we have news or a message that provokes us we want to share it yeah but there's something that's happened you know over generations where we've kind of bought into the lie that religion is not something we talk about or mm -hmm. it's okay for us but we don't want to put it on anyone else yeah. but the call Jesus gives us as his followers is share sure. this news this yeah. is hope for a hopeless world this yeah. is light into what feels dark this is rest for those who are weary mm -hmm. this is good news in a world where we're all we're used to hearing is bad news yeah. and if it changes our lives which I'm here because Jesus changed my life you're here yeah. because Jesus changed your life why wouldn't we want to share that with other people mm. and i love that kind of the journey from jerusalem to emmaus the seven miles has literally taken all day because yeah. when you walk in disappointment it's a tough walk yeah but they see the risen lord jesus they literally grab their shoes and they run back, back. yeah the seven miles because it's an easy journey when you're full of joy mm. and so it doesn't mean it's not scary it doesn't mm. mean that we have the perfect words but what it yeah. does mean is when jesus we encounter the risen Lord Jesus, we've got to pass on. Yeah. And that's a challenge for all of us. Yeah. And, and you know, I like, I like the fact that we've end, ended on mm. on sharing the good news um, because that's, that is the whole point. The whole point is that through the good, the bad, the, you know, mm. times of uncertainty or certainty, um, when things are going well and they're not, um, you know, Jesus is always there mm. and, you know, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Mm. And, and, you know, even when we think um, that he maybe he wouldn't be interested in what we're going through, he shows himself and, you know, and he cares, you know. He asks um, questions. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he wants to enga engage, with, engage with us in that way. And so, you know, that's beautiful. Um, and you know, I'm looking forward to the rest of this series. Yeah, I'm looking forward to next week, Nana, because you are oh, preaching on one of my favorite passages in all of Scripture. So there's a plug. If you are free this Sunday morning, we are <laughs> at St Luke's 10:30 as ever. Nana's going to be yeah. sharing about the next encounter with the risen Lord Jesus, where he cooks breakfast for Peter and James yeah. and John mm -hmm. and some others on the beach, unpacking what it means to know Jesus's embrace and forgiveness and mm -hmm. purpose given. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. No pressure, Nana. And no I'll pressure. be back interviewing Nana uh. next week for Sunday <laughs> Recap. So as ever, as Nana usually says, you know, follow us on our social medias, yeah. um, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, 
Um, we've got a new podcast. Our sermon podcast yeah. is now out. Look for it on all podcast providers. St Luke's E16, it will come up. Yeah. And this week, Nana is also dropping a cheeky new podcast, St Luke's Unplugged. Um, uh, unpacked! Unpacked! St Luke's Unpacked. You're crazy. Yeah, unpacked. St Luke's Unpacked. Discussing real issues yeah. in a way that the church maybe doesn't often talk about. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, it's going to be great. Thanks, Nana. Thank I'll let you close good. the episode because I don't know why I just jumped in like that. Because I got excited. <laughs> Nana <laughs> preaching. Church, we want to see Nana preach more. It's great. Um, I'm yeah. excited. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, <laughs> Reverend Amy, <laughs> for joining us on Sunday Recap. Uh, we will surely see you next week. Um, and so uh, catch you on the other side. Have a good one. Bye.